So women across Latin America marked International Women's Day by protesting the rise of violent acts against women in what they have labeled femicide. In Uruguay, Brazil, and Peru, women call for justice as many murders go unsolved. Protesters in Mexico are taking it a step further today. They are calling for a day without women. Nationwide, women are being urged not to shop, not to attend work or leave their homes in an attempt to show the country just what life would be like without them. In Mexico alone, an average of 10 women are killed a day. So joining me now on the phone from Mexico City is freelance reporter Adrian Bard to talk more about this. Thank you so much uh, for joining us, Adrian. Can we talk about some of the reasons behind the rise in violence against women, not only in Mexico, but also across Latin America? Well, good morning, Emery. I think that what, what the women here are saying is that it's two things. It's the rise of violence, and it's the fact that their criminal complaints, at least in Mexico, are not getting investigated. There's no justice. We've had several high-profile cases here in Mexico which have been bringing awareness to this problem, and that includes the recent abduction, rape, and murder of a 7-year-old girl whose name was Fatima, and that was just kind of the straw that broke the camel's back. So we're using the word femicide, but femicide is murder. Murder is femicide. Like there shouldn't be another word, but the fact of the matter is that when the victim is a woman or a girl, the system treats this case differently. Exactly. That's exactly the point. And 6,000 criminal cases um, in Mexico have not been investigated, cases against women. And, and out on the march, the protest march yesterday, with 80,000 women participating in Mexico, the women that I spoke to, some of whom were family members of victims uh, or victims themselves, said, you know, they feel that their, their criminal justice system is failing them. And that's why this femicide uh, concept has been created. But it does have a legal concept in Mexico, too, and the punishment ostensibly are supposed to be greater. Okay, so this is supposed to be sort of an as added designation to make the crime sort of even worse because we're talking about a group, a group that is particularly victimized. But how, can we talk a little bit more about sort of the other factors that are contributing to this? The history of femicide and the role of machismo culture, is that also something that the women are sounding the alarm about? Absolutely. I've lived here for 30 years, but I was still astonished by some of the stories that I heard in the march yesterday, with women describing a kind of a systematic uh, machismo in their lives, from being harassed as little girls or teenagers, being bothered at school, sexually abused by family members. Of course, to the worst cases, these scenarios with these heinous murders are, are happening. And part of it has an economic, socioeconomic factor, Anne-Marie, also, um, in, the, in the case of men uh, partially maybe frustrated, maybe too much alcohol or drug abuse, but generally there's a kind of a, this violence geared towards women that uh, just have a group of men in Mexico that feel that they can get away with it. And that's really the, the bottom line here, why women are rising up in Mexico in this tremendous show of force. And I guess, you know, you said a group of men that feel like they can get away with it. It, it sounds like based on the numbers, they are getting away with it. Well, right. That's more accurate. Men are getting away with it. In some cases, I, I think, to be fair to the Mexican legal system, we are seeing some of the tides turning in the sense that now, uh, yesterday, for example, I was talking to one woman, one case, about one case, her niece was abducted and, uh, from a bus and killed, and that person was caught and given 70 years in prison. So they are coming up under this genocide law with stiffer um, rules and, and regulations. That's good. I, you know, you mentioned one case about a little girl. Was there, uh, you know, something in particular that triggered the demonstrations that we're seeing right now? Um, that was one of them, but it, it's more than only the violence against women and these abductions and rapes and these murders. It's also women clamoring for equality in a different sense. Um, women earn on the average 34 percent less than men do in Mexico, and it's one of the lowest, if not the lowest, in Latin America. So, and I heard some of that in the march yesterday. It's kind of a coming together of women's issues, but again, seeing these images, social media, videos of actually, in the case of a seven-year-old girl, seeing her being taken away from her school by a woman who had lived in her home and in fact the woman was working for a, a boyfriend a partner 
Um, and, it, you know, that was just a particularly bothersome image for many, many women and people here in Mexico. So we're uh, playing some of the video of some of the demonstrations. And I don't know if you know this, but we're seeing women wearing red, but also with sort of black um, masks, if you will, sort of across their eyes. Do you know what the significance of that is? Right. Well, there was a, there was a smaller group within the massive, uh, larger protest group of uh, really um, activists who turn violent mm. and um, are more rebellious. And they spray paint. Um, they cover their faces. Uh, you know, I don't know if it's just because they don't want to be seen and have their faces filmed. But I saw firsthand yesterday some actions they were taking that were not peaceful marching, for example, breaking glass windows of buildings. There was all, there were also Molotov cocktails thrown. Mm. So there is a radical faction within this movement, unfortunately. And yesterday, six people were actually arrested. A couple of people, unfortunately, were hurt in the march. And is the expectation that women will stay home? I mean, how widespread is this movement? Will Mexico feel the impact today of a day without women? Uh, I, my impression is that, yes, there's going to be millions of women from all walks of life joining this movement, um, not going to work, as you said, not going to the grocery store. And in schools, for example, um, people I know, they're, they're girls who are not going to school today, mothers who don't want their girls to, to go to school and participate, but also because most of the teachers in Mexico are women, and they're not going to school today to teach. So it remains to see the ep economic impact, but the organizers behind this protest today, this national women's strike day without women are hoping that an ep economic impact will also be felt and that will send a clear message to the government in Mexico that more needs to be done to protect them. All right, Adrian, thank you so much for bringing us up to speed. Thanks for having me.